So Mark chapter four um, about uh, seeds, and uh, actually uh, Jesus was talking about the uh, uh, condition of the uh, um, heart. The soil condition is the condition of the heart. So I'm going to read that. Um, listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of soil. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched, and because it had no root, and it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Other seeds fell into the good soil, and as they grew up and increased, they, they yielded a crop and produced thirty, sixty, and hundredfold. And he was saying, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. As soon as he was alone, his followers along with the twelve began asking him about the parables. And he was saying to them, to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God, but those who are outside get everything in parables so that while seeing they may see and not perceive, and while hearing they may hear and not understand, otherwise they might return and be forgiven. You know, so why God, Jesus has to uh, tell everything in parables? He said the reason here, because, you know, these um, uh, people who really has a hunger uh, for God, and those who really love God, those who want to follow God, they're going to pursue. They're going to pursue and they're going to um, uh, more have that hunger. They're going to search. They're going to seek answers. For them, it has been given. You know, so and not people outside. Outside the kingdom means they are not interested at all. They're, they have no hunger at all. Uh, for God, they're not looking for God, they're not seeking God, and they don't love God. And for them, you know, all these things are like a hidden, the truth is hidden in parables. So that's why it's not as um, the things of the kingdom is not spoken so clearly, it is uh, hidden in parables. The kingdom truth is hidden in parables. Only people who search for them, the understanding is given. For them, the revelations are given. So now you know that, right? Revelations are given for people who really seek God, who go after God, who pursue God. Okay. So here, and uh, he he spoke in this uh, parable, you know, um, here in verse 13, it says that he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables? So it means, you know, this is the something very beginning. Jesus said uh, the parable and this is the uh, parable everybody is supposed to understand. But if this is only you cannot understand, why, how can you understand other parables, you know? So it means this is the foundation. This is the basic for other parables because this is all about how you hear the word of God. You know, so all of us today will come into some category in this. He mentioned about four categories. People, they hear God. They, they listen to word of God. But um, all of us, how we are listening, how we are hearing God will fit into one of these categories, you know. And um, so uh, about the soil, uh, four kinds of soil, Jesus ex um, explained about four kinds of soils here. For one soil is roadside soil, and the, another soil is rocky soil. It has so much of rock inside the soil. And the other soil is a thorny soil, like it so many thorn weeds also growing in that soil. And the other soil is a, a good soil. There is no obstacles. Everything is so nice, plowed and everything nice. So the seeds, the sower, you know, like in people who are living in cities, they don't understand this parable well. But the people who live in the villages, 
the farmlands they know what how because those days like everything farmland and jesus was always looking at the farmers how they go and sow the seeds you know and so they when the sower is going and 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 take the seeds and just uh, started scattering the seeds right and um, i actually so some you know uh, seeds are so small and so you know some fell in different different kinds of soils there you know um uh, there is a good soil is actually prepared for the seed is also there but um, when the sower is uh, scattering seed some different kinds of soil some fell on the roadside soil too you know so the roadside soil here he explained the meaning in this in this uh, chapter only he explained the meaning so um the sower sows the word okay the seed is the word of god so the seed is word of god so these are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown and when they hear immediately satan comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them okay so it means uh, people i told you i exactly i told you the people who do not have any heart to understand um the word they don't have any hunger for the word of god yes people just they come to god but they come looking for you know um, some blessing some miracle but they don't want to know the word of god they don't have any hunger for the word of god you know you people are really joining the bible study means you that shows that you really have a heart hunger for the word of god you want the word of god right see like that people who do not have that that is what he speaking spoken about the roadside soil right and that's why they listen to the they hear the word but they don't make any effort they don't make any effort to understand the word so that's when the satan comes and steals so the birds come and eat away because that it is just lying on the soil it's not going inside so the word of god is not penetrating into their hearts because they're not making any effort to understand the word right so um so it was just lying on the surface and the birds got it and and came and took the seeds away so that's how the satan comes take the steal the word of god from them right so how can they give any fruit because it's not so inside and the second kind of people is that you know um similar way they are the um uh similar way these are the uh, ones uh, on whom seed was sown on the rocky places when they hear the word immediately receive it with joy and they have no firm root in themselves but are only temporary then when affliction or persecution arises because of the word immediately they fall away okay so um these people are like you know um they they hear the word they enjoy the word of god you know like um, they hear the gospel emotionally they make a decisions you know oh okay i want to i want to receive jesus you know when we give them the gospel emotional emotional all you know uh, okay okay i i want jesus okay i you know i i receive jesus i want to be baptized you know i want to accept jesus so like it's a all emotional but they don't understand the cost of what is the cost of following jesus they don't they don't estimate the cost you know following jesus is going to cost you is going to cost you when following jesus is a you have to uh you have to um uh, you go through opposition from the enemy you go through opposition the trials and the persecution uh comes from the enemy so um they don't uh, estimate all that before when they are receiving jesus you know they think that ah everything just nice uh, just receiving jesus something will happen to us you know like that uh, intention they just come to the lord and afterwards what happens when they started facing persecution when they start facing opposition from the enemy that's it they fall away they quickly quit following jesus they go back to their own world again you know 
So why? Because there is no root. It means uh, they, they, they need to be ready to pay the cost. Following Jesus, you need to be ready, willing to pay the cost. Okay, God, you know, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, I will go with you. Whatever it takes, I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. You know, sometimes persecution comes. Sometimes problem comes. Trials come. Whatever it is, God, you are with me. You know, but I want life with you. Doesn't matter. Even the trials comes. I want to be with you. I want to be stand for the truth. I want to be with you. I want eternal life. Even I don't have a good life on this earth. But Lord, I want to be with you in eternity. Your, you, you with me is more, more than anything in this world. Like that, beloved, that is what, you know, they need to go deeper and understand the cost involved in following Jesus. So that's why the root is not inside going. It's a rocky, rocky, you know, and that's why they fall away when the persecution comes, they immediately fall away. And the other set of people uh, whom seed was sown among thorns, these are the ones who have heard the word, but the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Yes, last Sunday I was really uh, speaking more elaborated about this thing. Uh, if, if you have not heard it, go back and hear the uh, word, uh, last Sunday's word. You know, this is a, actually, we listen to the word of God. No problem with that. We listen to the word of God. The word of God is also sown. No problem. We say that, yes, we are healed by his stripes. Yes, I believe it. We are healed by his stripes. No problem to believe it, right? The word is sown. But at the same time, uh, what other voices are telling, also we believe it. You know what? Um, that person has problem, you know, even though we prayed, it never happened. So it means it is not the will of God for everybody to be healed, you know. It is not God. for some people, they get healed, for some not. Maybe that reason, maybe this reason. That also we believe it. We believe the first thing too, we believe the other voice too. So like that, beloved, if we keep on, you know, some other person say, oh, you know what, that disease is, that disease is very severe, like that disease, uh, you know, that, that, um, that is impossible, that is, uh, uh, cannot be healed, cured, cannot be healed, you know, maybe it's God's time for them to go home, like that, that also we believe it. So what are we are doing? And that, like the, the case of this world, sometimes anxieties, you know what? You know, yes, following Jesus is good, but you also need the world, the worldly things too. You need to have a job. You need to have this. You need to look after this. You need to look after family. This is also important for you. So not to, yes, serve God, but serve this too. Other things also important in your life. You know, what about that? What if, so like that, that, everything we are receiving it. We are sowing everything inside. That's what the case of this world and the unbelief and everything we are sowing inside. Okay. So that word alone is not there. There are so many other seeds also growing along with the word of God. So what, <clears throat> what happened is other things will dominate the word of God because in our heart, we allowed other stuff also get in. So these other stuff always want to dominate the word of God inside. Okay, so what happens? We listen to the word. The word will never be fulfilled in our life because we believe that word we are healed, but we, are, we never see the healing manifesting in our life why we never got healed, why? Because all other uh, contradicting the healing, all other voices which contradict the word of God, that also we received it, you know? So those things really dominated for us to just believing the word alone. Beloved, if we are not, if we do not have a single mind, if we have a divided heart, you know, so many things at the same time growing in our heart is not good. It's a divided heart. 
can you call divided heart, divided mind, not just one desire. Following God is only one desire. You know, we cannot follow many things at the same time. We only, if you follow, follow God alone and everything else will come to us. Jesus said that, seek my kingdom first and righteousness. All other things will be added unto you. Okay. So we cannot follow other things. They will come to us if you follow Jesus. We can't put focus on everything. You know, we need to have a single focus, single mind, single heart. Okay. Then only we can become fruitful. That seed, what we believed, is going to give us fruit. We will become fruitful. The word of God is going to be fulfilled in our life. Okay. So that's why they're not fruitful. The other kind of soil is that good soil. And I told you that. So these are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil. And they hear, they hear the word, accept it and bear fruit. Okay. So they hear the word and they accept the word and they bear fruit because it's a good soil. There are no rocks. There are no thorns. It's really ready for the seed made ready, that soil made ready for the seed. And then you know what? When the word of God comes to them, the word will bring forth fruit in their life. What they believed, it will happen. That 30 and 60 and 100 fold. Okay. We start seeing the result of believing the word of God. So, okay, then um, the, the next day I'll move on. And he was saying to them, a lamp is not brought to be put under a basket, is it? Or under a bed, is it not brought to be put on the lampstand? For nothing is hidden except to be revealed, nor has anything been secret, but that it would come to light. So, you know, after this, the word of God, he's spoken about lamp. It means what? The word of God is like a lamp. That's why in Psalms, David said, your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your word, lamp unto my feet. You know, word of God is described as a lamp. It gives light. So that's why word of God is going to expose every hidden thing. That's why it says that, you know, nothing is hidden. Nothing is hidden except to be revealed. Word of God is going to expose Every that's why before the word of God, in front of the word of God, nothing can be hidden, nothing can hide before the word of God. You know why? Once the word of God comes into our life, I'm telling you, you let the word of God go into your heart deeper and deeper. Let the word of God search your heart. I'm telling you, the word of God, you know, it says that it's so powerful. It's a double-edged sword. It can penetrate into your bones and marrows and joints. It pierces and it searches, it searches. Anything is there, not of God. Anything is there, is of the enemy. Is any deception inside? Is any sin inside? It can search, it can search, it can bring it out. The word of God is going to expose that to you. Then you, it's your responsibility whether you want that to be plucked out or not. But the word will do its job. The word will do. But the word is not going to, you know, take that away, your sin away without your permission though. The word is just a lamp to given to you to show you, only to show you. But if you accept it, if you're willing to get rid of the bad stuff from your heart, then you, you should ask God's grace. God, give me a power to come out of this stuff. Okay? Then God's word will have power to pluck it out. You know, last week I was talking about, you know, Jeremiah, God said, Jeremiah, I put my words in your mouth to pluck it, to uproot it. You know, so that's why the word can even do that. The word has power to pluck it, to uproot it only if we allow it. 
So, but he's saying that, you know, it's a lamp unto our feet. It's a lamp. Lamp always not be under the bed. It should not be under the bed. It ha always has to be. So, word of God, you give high priority. You know, put it on the lampstand. Don't put it on the under the bed. Word is not to be under the bed because that is lamp is no one is going to put lamp on the under the bed. Lamp is always need to be on the lampstand because the word you give high priority. If you give high priority to the word of God, the word of God is going to show everything hidden things in our heart, you know. And then he was saying that take care what you listen. Take care what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you, and more will be given you. More will be given you besides. Hallelujah. Take care what you listen to. You know, by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. You know what? It's it's a if you have more, if you have more, more will be given. More will be given. So that's why I'm telling you know um. How you take the word of God, be careful, God is telling. How you take the word of God, be careful, you know. And please don't listen to all, don't follow the sentiments though. Some, some sentiments, superstitions, these kind of things over, overpower the word of God. You know what? So many sentiments we have. These are man-made things, man-made sentiments. You know, um, sometimes we give so much value to these uh, superstitions and sentiments uh, more than just take the word of God. Everything ha we have to see in the light of the word of God, in light of the word of God. We should not go after superstitions and, the, you know, sentiments. Uh, and these are man-made things, okay? Uh, because they, people even, they go after science also. Oh, oh, this is happening two times. It means, because why this is happening two times? Why this is happening three times? It means maybe, you know, maybe this is what going to happen. Maybe this is what, no, what maybe or what? Uh, yeah, everything has to be checked with the word of God. It doesn't matter three times happening, four times happening, five times happening. Is it the word says anything? You know, we hear God in our spirit, not our brains though. We can't just figure out things and reason things and follow things from the brain intellectual. No, mind is not your guide, um, your heart. We don't hear God in our minds. We hear God in our spirits. So all these man-made things are in the mind. Okay, Superstition, sentiments are all in the mind. We have to really take the word of God. We can hear God from heart. Okay, And then, um, uh, so what? Uh, how the measure you measure, it will be measured to you. More will be given you. See, if you keep receiving the word, God, God's way of measuring is different. Eh? See, we, we think, oh, whoever is not having much, we let's give them, we think like that. But God do not think that way. Kingdom is different. God thinks like that. No, no, no. Whoever has will give more to them. If you keep receiving the word, if you keep giving importance, if you keep working in the word of God, okay, word of God has come to, you know, correct you or come to uh, uh, give you discipline or you, you immediately yielded, immediately yielded, obeyed, God will talk to you more. So who receives, they will be given more. If you keep receiving the word, God wants to talk to you more. God will talk to you more. So who has will be given more. Who has much, much will be given. That's the way kingdom works, okay? <clears throat> who, who do not have it, it will be taken away what they have it to. If you are not listening to the word of God, if you don't obey the word of God, he will stop talking. God will stop talking. So whatever they heard already, even that also gone away. God will stop talking. Okay. And then, you know, parable of the seed. The kingdom of God is like a man who eats, who, who cast seed upon the soil and he goes to bed at night and gets up by day and the seed sprouts and grows how he himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself. First the blade and the head and the mature grain in the head. But when the crop uh, permits, 
he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes, sometimes we think we give the word, but we forget. Sometimes we preach the word. Afterwards, we, we forget. But I'm telling you, once the word goes into people's hearts, once the word is sown in their heart, it's okay even after some years, several years, that word is going to work in their hearts. And, you know, um, you might have forgotten long back, my, you might have preached that word long back. But, you know, in a believer heart, it is that word has result. It's still working. You know why I'll tell you? So many years back, see, now 20 years now we are in this country. 20 years back in India, when I was in India, I, what the messages I heard from in our church, sometimes even today, God reminds, Holy Spirit, God reminds that word, bring back to my memory, some when I needed the word, when I needed some in a situations, in, a, in you know, circumstances, I needed to hear God. That time, sometimes 20 years back, when I heard that word come back to my memory, it means, did you see that? The word of God is not going to go away. It is already sown in my heart. When that word was sown in my heart, even after 20 years, 30 years, that word still come back to my memory. And God uses that word to talk to me in my current situation. So that's why God said, you know, for children, when they're young, teach them the way when they're young. When they grow old, they will not depart from it. Sometimes, you know, I really believe that my son really came back to God after so many years because the young age, they were already taught in the Sunday schools. I even at home, I taught them so much of word of God, you know. So see, I, even after so many years, that word still, God used that word to talk to them again when they need it. So that's why he says that, a, a person goes into the field and sow the seeds. He forgets and he sleeps and he goes away. But after afterwards, the harvest time, you will find, ah, the, oh, fruit, is, when did I sow this? Wow, the plant has come. The harvest is ready, you know. So like that. So um, you know, parable of the mustard seed. How shall we picture the kingdom of God or what parable shall we present it? It is like a mustard seed. It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the soil, though it is smaller than all the seeds that are upon the soil, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and forms large branches so that the birds of the air can nest under its shade. You know, the word of God is has that much power power and potential. We think the just the word we think, right? But you know, word can do so much work in our life. That's what the mustard seed is so small seed. You know, that's why God always, uh, you know, uh, compares our faith like a mustard seed. You know, it doesn't matter once you hear the word of God. And uh, that word has so much potential in us. It can bring forth a big result in our life. It's like a mustard tree is a huge tree. It grows and become very big and become blessing to many other birds which are migrating from nation to nation. Those birds only rest on the tall trees. Eh? They don't come down on, and rest on the lower um, height uh, uh, trees. They only rest on the tall trees because they're migrating from a nation to nation. Some birds, those are special birds, you know. So mustard tree is so tall enough to accommodate all those kind of birds. You know, I'm telling you, a word of God is so powerful. If you can let that word sow in your heart and guard your heart from sowing other bad seeds, weeds in your heart, if you can guard your heart from other voices, other seeds, 
and if you alone let the mustard seed grow alone in your heart it can the word can become so fruitful in your life can make you like a mustard tree blessing to many nations the people from other countries also can come to have a rest under your anointing they'll be blessed under your anointing you will grow in a such a way in the power and the authority of the lord if you can just let grow only the words of god guard your heart from other seeds okay um then uh, he finished uh, telling all this and then he um then he moved on and then uh, on that day when evening came he said to them let us go over to the other side leaving the crowd they took him along with them in the boat just as he was and the other boats were with him and there arose a fierce gale of wind and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up jesus himself was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing and he got up and rebuked the wind um, and he rebuked the wind and they said to the sea hush be still and the wind died down and it became perfectly calm wow <laughs> so okay um then he said to them why are you afraid how is it that you have no faith so and they became very much afraid and said to one another who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him you know so in this um, Uh, in this incident what are the things we needed to learn is that Je- when they are afraid jesus is telling asking them why you don't have how is it that you have no faith so it means even the water is coming inside the boat and even the boat is started drowning it means god is expecting them not to be afraid <laughs> see you think that you know yeah things are happening ah that's why i'm afraid so that's the reason we give we will we justify our fears lot of times we justify our fears yes i'm fearful because you know this is happened this is happening but you know jesus is telling them is rebuking them actually why are you afraid how is it that you have no faith it means beloved what god is expecting us to have faith is that um the word of god was given to them that let us go over to the other side of the sea he already spoken to them that word so it means when we are going through storms or winds god is expecting us to have faith in the word that's why where is your faith he's he asking how is that we had to have faith in something right we have faith in where faith in where not faith in god here god me faith in god is okay yes god is true god is real that not that faith will not save them from this uh, uh wind and uh, uh water that way many people say that you know believe believe in, ah, i believe i believe they are telling that they are believing in god yes they believe in jesus but that faith you if you believe in jesus you received eternal life you are saved that is for that but do you believe in this problem do you believe in jesus this problem will go away but to believe the problem will go away this problem is not going to drown us this water is not going to drown us we are not going to die we are not going to drown that faith how can you have you have to have faith in the word of god what word is given to you that word we have to hold on because jesus spoke in that word before they setting up the journey 
See, remember here, you will go back to and listen to that. Let us, in the red letters is written, right, in the Bible. Let us go over to the other side. So Jesus already told them, we are going go to the other side. Okay. So that word, we have to put faith. So on the journey, even though you are facing many obstacles in the journey, but still we are supposed to put faith in that. No, we are going to, Jesus said, he is sending us to go to the other side. It means he will take us through. If he is sending us, he is going to take us through. So even the storm comes, even the cyclone comes, even the water comes, he will take us through. He will take us through. That is the faith we need to have. That is what he's questioning them. Where is your faith? How is it that you don't have faith? So when I'm telling to you, I, I remembered in the book of Acts, shipwreck for Apostle Paul, you know, so when Apostle Paul was going in that ship and there was so much, you, you know that the shipwreck happened and because of the storm and the ship was started breaking, the waves were too strong. It hit the icebergs and the ship started breaking into pieces and everything, they started unloading the ship and throw away all the stuff. And, you know, at that time in the dream, God appeared to you know, Paul and reminded him the promise he given. You know, you are going to stand before the Gentile kings as my witness. Actually, he was going to Rome, right? They're taking him to Rome because he he's told them that I want to um, uh, uh, stand before Caesar. That's why they're taking him to Caesar, who was in, in uh, Rome, right? So that is the promise God already given. That was his calling. He called him to be stand, be a witness before the Gentile kings. Caesar is a Gentile, right? The Gentile kings. So as of my witness, that's God reminded him his calling because so that you don't believe in the storm and you don't be afraid. You are not going to be afraid in the storm. If you remind your calling, no, 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 no. God promised to me, I'm going to stand before the Gentile king. So this shipwreck is not going to take my life. Even there is a shipwreck, maybe God is going to come through. I don't know how. How, I don't know, because he already spoken to me. I'm going to Rome. I'm going to stand before Caesar. I'm going to, God is going to use me there. So I cannot die now. So I don't know how, but God will rescue me. So that's the kind of faith. God is started reviving his faith. That's why he appeared to him in the dream and he reminded him the promise. Beloved, sometimes Holy Spirit God will help us even in the time of problems we go through. He will strengthen our faith. Don't worry. He will strengthen us. He will keep reminding us. He will keep, you know, I already spoken to you the word. Keep your faith on the word. He will remind the word. Okay. So, yeah. <coughs> so, I finished uh, chapter 4. And 10 minutes more for, to go for 12 o'clock. And chapter 5, I'm going to uh, one this miracle. Let's see. So they reached the other side of the um, shore. Okay. They reached the other side of the shore. And uh, actually, you know, now you understand why he wants to go to the other side of the shore. When he reached the other side of the shore, what they saw is that it's the country of Gerasenes, okay? And there, there is a man there. He got out of the boat immediately, a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He had his dwelling among the tombs and no, no one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and the mountains, and the gashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. 
and shouting with a loud voice, he said, what business do we have both with each other? Jesus, son of most high God, I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had been saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain. The demons implored him saying, send us into the swine so that we may enter them. You know, I really, really was so much touched by this story. You know, Jesus told the disciples, let's go to the other side of the boat. Why? For this man. To meet this man. You know, everybody left this man, you know, because he was so violent. It was so, it says that they tried to chain him, put shackles to his feet and to his hands, but they could not do it because he's breaking them out. He was breaking, that, that was the demons inside, given him so much power, the iron chains, iron chains were breaking. Did you see the power of the devil? He was breaking the iron chains, you know, and he was only like he was living in the tombs. That's what the demons take people. You know what demons, where they belong? It's a spirit of death, right? They belong to the death all the time. See where the dead, deadly things, there it will take people into deadly things, you know. So this person cannot live in the city, was roaming in the burial ground, is a cemetery, you know, tombs, among tombs he was living because demons made him to go there and live in the tombs. And, um, and these are unclean spirits. Jesus said unclean spirits, these are, you know, and they, they are, he was beating himself up. He was beating himself up. You know, and he was uh, so so violent, and he was screaming in the tombs. Uh, no one is able to subdue him. Everybody left him in there, right? But you know what? God loved him. God loved him. You know, like Jesus, the places he went and he visited, it is all led. He was led by the Spirit of God. Jesus said, everything my father say, I'm saying. Everything my father is doing, I am doing. Did you believe that? How much father loves people? How much our heavenly father loves people? You know, this man is so violent, full of demons, but God loved that man. And God has a plan for that man. God wants to deliver that man. You know, that's why I really feel that, beloved. You know, if we are available to God, God really loves so many people in, around us. God is really looking to deliver people. God wants to deliver people. God wants to heal people. Why he's not doing it? Because he's not getting a person to do it. Because he, God, works only through human agents. God works through humans, beloved. God will not come down and do it. Like, you know, that becomes illegitimate. That doesn't become legitimate. Because God is spirit and this is physical world. Can't enter into just a physical world and do things on his own. He won't. It's like an illegitimate. That's why. Why Jesus has to come down to earth to save us. As a man, he has to come down. Otherwise, how can God save all humanity? Because God is spirit and this is a physical world, a physical beings. And God do not interfere into physical world uh, in the spirit form, through physical world, through physical world, through physical human body, only God, when enters, it becomes uh, um, yeah, legitimate. You know, in this, I will tell you one thing, uh, in the Garden of Eden, the devil, how devil 
to tempt Eve, devil also has to enter into the serpent. Serpent is a physical being. Otherwise, devil cannot do. Devil cannot talk to uh, Eve and because he's a spirit being, it becomes illegitimate. So that's why enter into the serpent body and to talk to um, Eve. You know, so uh, God needs humans uh, uh, to set things right in the in the human world. Okay, so that's why you know uh, God has to come down as a man, Jesus, to save us all. Right. So here, and if you are available, God really looking to deliver people, and God want because God loves them. God wants to heal them. And see here, Jesus went there to spot that man in the tombs. And you know, and that man, as soon as he saw Jesus, oh my God, he ran to Jesus. He ran to Jesus and the spirit started talking to him. Spirit started talking to him. You know, talking to Jesus through here, this man. And saying that, oh, Jesus, what business you have with me? Why did you come to torment me? Beloved, the presence of God is a torment to the devil. God's presence itself is a torment to the devil. We don't need to do anything to torment the devil. We just have to carry the presence of God. Why? Because unholiness cannot live, stand in the presence of holiness. Where there is holiness, you know, unholiness cannot stand in the presence of holiness. So that's why, oh Jesus, why did you come here to torment me? And you know what? And another interesting thing that demons are saying, you know, please give permission to go into the swine. Did you see that? That is called authority because Jesus owned that authority without his permission they are not allowed to move. Even, you know, if they want to go to, into the pigs, they can just go without telling, without asking permission, Jesus, right? Why? Because they're asking, because Jesus has the authority without his permission, they can't move. You know what, the same thing I'm telling you, if God has given you authority to, de to cast out demons, demons will behave with the same way how they behave with Jesus. They behave with the same way. You know, without our permission, they're not allowed to enter into any other man. If we go and if you find a demon in a person, the demon have to ask our permission where to go. If you are sending a demon out, it will ask you, where can I go? Where can I go? Well, one time I, it happened with me, one time one girl came for prayer and I was uh, casting the demon out uh, and the, the demon was asking me, because you are asking me to go, where to go? I asked, then I said, go into the Ontario lake, I said. <laughs> go and go into the lake. You know, uh, one time even it happened with Sister Leah and she was casting out uh, so many demons from a person and, you know, um, and they did those demons asked sister Le, where shall where where shall we go and then she said go and jump into that one area one lake is the tank bund area you know and okay uh, do you want me to go and jump into the into the lake and go into the fish <laughs> because there are fish in that uh, uh, in the lake so those demons asked her like that okay do you want me to go into the water and go and go into the fish? <laughs> and and the sister Lee said, okay, go, go into the fish. So she gave permission. And so they, they went that night itself, I think. But next morning, there was a um, news in the newspaper uh, saying that all fish in Tangban died. <laughs> That was the news actually came. They got the news. 
So then it was really shook her. It was, she was so shocked. Oh my God, these demons went into that uh, tank bird and got into the fishes and fishes died. You know, so these, uh, you know what these demons did? Legion, many, like a thousand, I think. So they, uh, um, Jesus gave permission, okay, go, go. So they're asking, swine were there, 2,000, 2,000 pigs were there. And, and those were uh, tending the uh, pigs. Those people also were watching everything. They went and got into the pigs. And the pigs, all pigs just ran into the water and drowned in the water and they died. You know, okay, see, um, Jesus gave them permission and coming out, unclean spirits entered the swine and the herd rushed down to the steep bank into the sea, about 2,000 of them, and they were drowned in the sea. Their herdsmen ran away and reported it in the city and in the country, and the people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down, clothed in his right mind, and the very man who had the legion, and they became frightened. Did you see that? They, these town people, they came to know that because they went and told everybody, those watching the people who are tending the swine, those people went and told everybody and those uh, village people all came and saw this person completely delivered and healed with the wearing nice like a right mind with clothes on maybe before he, he was naked maybe and with clothes putting on and with right men sit right mind sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to him and now the people were frightened now did you see they were frightened more now than when he was in chains and screaming and roaming in the tombs, they're frightened now more than frightening that time. Why? Because they're frightened now and they said to Jesus, please leave. You know, verse 17, it says, they began to implore him to leave their region. They are actually begging him to leave. Why? They were frightened more now. Did you see, beloved, the mentality of humans, mindset of people? Did you see the mindset of people? When that man was in fully possessed with demons, now he's become good. Now you become more frightened. After he became good, after he delivered, you become more frightened now. Oh my God. So they asked Jesus to leave. I'm telling you, people, they don't want to be, get out of the, their, these, uh, they don't want to change. This is what it says. Because a miracles, when done, that is clear evidence that there is God. And that demand, demands people to change. Do you see that? People don't are afraid to change. People are okay, comfort zone. They don't like to change. They want to be where they are. If they really, why? That's the reason they want Jesus to leave. Because that miracle, what happened to this man, is demanding their faith. Because every time when a miracle happens, that is a clear evidence that there is God. When you start believing that there is God, then you're supposed to have a fear of God and you're supposed to obey God. That brought fear because they're not ready to change. They were not ready to change. You know, so then this man um, requested Jesus, Jesus, please, I will also come with you wherever you go. You know, this man has such a hunger who was delivered, is so set free. He wants to be with Jesus. But the rest of the town, the rest of the people, they don't want Jesus. 
But this man who was delivered want to be with Jesus, so close to Jesus. And then he's asking Jesus, can I come with you, please, wherever you go? But Jesus said, and he did not let him, but he said to him, go home to your people and report to them what great things that Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. And Jesus did not give permission for him to come with him. And he said, go, go back, go back to your town. Go tell your people what God has done to you. You know, beloved, that's what really God sometimes, you know, when you receive a miracle, God wants us to go and tell people about our what God has done to us. That's what God told him, go. And then he went. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. After this man came and talking to them, and they are all amazed afterwards. Maybe he evangelized everybody. You know, slowly maybe they started believing it. Jesus, he changed that whole town with his testimony. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to stop here and uh, I'll continue next week. Okay. Hallelujah.